freshman going out. Now watch for Marciniak to put the ball up from the outside. I'll bet Pat Summit talked to her about diversity in their offensive attack. Still a good bit of time. Just over six minutes left to go. Oh, there's plenty of time in this basketball game. McCray, the senior, comes in for the big shot. She has 10 points. Now, Tennessee has to gamble some and try to create some things from their defense in order to give them back the momentum. Marciniak trying to tip the ball from behind, but it's called for the foul. She has three fouls now in the game. Something else about the senior class from Tennessee. They've been involved in the number one versus number two matchup four times. They are four and zero. Oh. When it's that case, this is the fifth game that they've been involved in, so they're used to the pressure cooker. Three of those games were against Stanford, one against Vanderbilt. Rebecca Lobo steps to the line, a very good free throw shooter. Watch out, watch out. We almost feel like we need to whisper. <laughs> the place gets so silent, you feel like if you talk, you're going to ruin the spell. Lobo now with 12 points. Hey, I also want to make the point that Rebecca's mother, Ruth Ann, was also a high school basketball star at Medfield High School in Massachusetts. She converts them both. Back up to an 11-point lead for Connecticut. Davis trying to make something happen to Tiffany Johnson. There's the penetration that opened things up. She drew the defense to and was able to give the handoff to Johnson. And you can sense that Tennessee is not panicking. They know that there's still a lot of time, five and a half minutes left to go. They're down by nine. You would not expect a veteran team like this, and especially with what they've gone through to panic, but they do have to play some defense. Jan Rosani, the big three. She has 15 points. And Connecticut enjoys. You know, 
Tennessee right now. There are a lot of calls that they feel are not going their way. It's going to be critical that they just shake this off. They can't blame anything on the officiating. They have plenty of time to get back in this game. And knowing Pat Summit, she won't let this team dwell on what's going on with the, with the uh, officiating. 23 turnovers now by Tennessee. 17 for Connecticut. Jim Rosati looking for Kara Walters. Kara Walters Taylor. got away with a walk right there. Down low to Tiffany Johnson. Good luck by Marciniak and great filling the lanes by Tiffany jo Johnson. Back down the 10 point lead for Connecticut. Tennessee applying that pressure. They get it across. Now Connecticut needs to use the clock as their ally and work for a good shot. Move the ball around like they normally do. Don't be too concerned about putting it up too quickly. Connecticut has a 10 point lead. They've got Down to go. That's a shot they want. High percentage. Balls in the right hands with Walters. Carol Walters now with 18 points of passing. Her season high is 20. And Walters now with 18. We've got number one versus number two, the Associated Press rankings. They will not vote for this week until after this game. The winner will be number one. Connecticut could be number one for the first time in school history. They're up by 12 points. Three minutes, 26 seconds left to go. Rebecca Lobo has fouled out. They're going the rest of the way without her. And Kara Walters has really stepped up her play with 16, excuse me, 18 points so far. For Connecticut. Robin, it's important to point out that all three of the losses of the top five teams came at the hands of Tennessee. Two for Louisiana Tech, one for Stanford. Pat Summit talking over matters with her fine coaching staff, Holly Warlick, Mickey DeMoss, Carolyn Peck. Pat Summit has been in this position before. She oh, knows yeah. not only how to keep her cool, but how to translate that to the players as well to help them understand they've got the time, they just need to do some things effectively. Three minutes left to go. And one of the effective things needs to be some steals off their defense. They can't trade possessions with Connecticut. Gambling on their defense, but Kara Walters is able to get it, but McCray comes down with the rebound. Marciniak to spin move. They're going hard to the boards. And Baruby is called for the foul. Dana Johnson all over the boards right now. And, and no time be. is beginning to run out. They've got to be. If they're not going to make that first shot, they've got to get a second and third. They have to crash the boards like they haven't done this entire game. That is Baruby's third personal foul. I also think the Tennessee attack, again, has to be diversified for them to make up this deficit in the two minutes and 40 seconds. They've got to hit some threes, some perimeter shots, as well as feed the ball inside. Dana Johnson steps to the line. She's 0 for 2 from the free throw line in this game. Oh, that's a big shot. You're 0 for 2, you step to the line, the place is going nuts, you're a senior, you nail it. And this is where you have to make every point count as Rebecca Lobo. Oh, you know she wants, to be, uh, <laughs> she wants to be in this game right now. It's a 10-point lead for Connecticut. About two and a half left to go. Now, this is where it doesn't matter how tired you are. You have to do your gut check and you got to go after it. with taking care of the ball. <laughs> what did I just say? Keisha Shells was not listening, gives up the ball. Tennessee with the... Oh, Jim Rosati, so quick, almost caused a turnover, but it was going to remain Tennessee's ball. And Jim Conklin going out. Michelle Johnson coming in as Gino Oriema directing his team. Pat Summit always working. A three-er can't get it to fall. And Baruby controlling it for Connecticut. A 
the wraparound to Jamel Elliott. Now, you saw the way Jamel Elliott took the time to gather herself and shoot that ball with confidence. She didn't rush it. Her That's the difference points. with this Connecticut team. Michelle Marciniak for three. Oh, my goodness. I tell you, with a three-point shot these days, there isn't a lead that's safe. That's a nine-point lead for Connecticut. A minute and a half to go. Marciniak called for blocking. That is her fourth foul. Connecticut, but that could be reversed. In another minute, 25 seconds, Connecticut knocking on the door. Number one. I love the way this Jen Rosati plays. She she adds the points, she gives you the points, but she does so many other things that, that are intangible and don't show up on any stat sheet. For instance, the way she took care of the ball today when she had Nikki McCray guarding her the entire game was really impressive with Nikki McCray being one of the best defensive players in the country. She's worked defensively, but also offensively. Rosati with 17 points in the game. Pam Weber will come back in for Connecticut. He can smell it. A minute 25 to go. Marciniak for three. Crashing the boards, Latina Davis. McCray. It's Connecticut's ball. You can see it written all over the Connecticut players' faces. Look at the reactions when those free throws go in. Jamel Elliott. That is Dana Johnson's fourth foul. A minute to go. And it's Connecticut. This is a great place to play, isn't it? These fans are incredible. I know there's only 8,000-plus 8, 8, fans, but, God, it sounds like it's about 80,000. Elliott, 10 points, 4 rebounds. Gino Ariema, very close to being number one. This game is going to be big. If they're able to pull this out, this will cement in their minds the fact that they belong here. There's always that little hint of a doubt, like, a doubt, like yeah, no, we're number two, we're number two, but are we really number two? They hadn't been tested yet this year. This was their first big test, and they seem to be coming through with flying colors. Yes, they are passing that test. Their biggest lead with under a minute to go, up by 13 over the top-ranked Lady Ball. You know what, though, Robin? A loss is not going to do any harm to Tennessee. They could almost use it to take the pressure off. one out after having to sit the last four minutes on the bench. Pat Summit has been here before. She understands the pressure. She told us earlier that it's very difficult to get up every single game like this when you're playing this kind of competition. Taking nothing away from Connecticut. They have deserved this victory. Davis. It's 11 points. 39 seconds left to go in the game. Nikki McRae is not going to go out quietly. <laughs> not with a whimper, that's for sure. She's trying to keep the ball out of Jen Rosati's hands. But Jen Rosati, if she does get the ball, can keep it alive and dribble the clock away. You know, I was making the point that I really don't think a loss is going to hurt this Tennessee team. A loss should always be a learning experience. And a lot of times when you go along, even when they've had the kind of schedule that Tennessee has played, you still don't necessarily take the time to look back and learn from what you've done. And a loss forces you to do that.
Tennessee still trying to get in the game, knowing there are only 22 seconds left. They're down by 11 points. But Pat Summit realizes you have to play this kind of competition. And boy, have they this year. They said they felt like an NBA expansion team with how many times they've been on the road and the grueling pace that they've kept up. But it is a tribute to this team that they've done as well as they have. And even with this team being the number two team, Connecticut now moving into number one, they've still played very well in this game. You wouldn't think it's 11 point difference the way this game has gone. Tennessee Lady Ball. 